Hi, in this video series, I'm going to demonstrate building and generating a number of the simulation models that we've covered in the class for BUY 321 uh, simulation modeling. The purpose of at least this first model that we're going to build is not so much to consider the decision support provided by the model, uh, by the model but rather just building a model in any logic, showing what the blocks um, are, how to connect them in a meaningful way that they actually produce a simulation model. We'll get to the decision support side at a later stage. So we jump right in into any logic. I'm going to close the welcome page and create myself a new project. You can specify where the models should be generated. I'm going to call mine small factory underscore a because I will break this video up into three portions and you can start whenever. I actually see it in my project tab here at the top. I've got a main agent type and a simulation window. In my project design space, I'm going to jump right in and add a few of the blocks. We will mainly use the process modeling library for now. So you can just click on your palette and scroll down until you get the little opened box. And that's where you'll find all of your um, blocks that we will at least use in this session. I always recommend that you have the reference guide close by. You can access the reference guide by clicking on help, going to any logic help, then going to the library reference guide, process modeling, and looking at all of the blocks. So for each of the blocks that you are going to use, you will actually um, see what the logo looks like. It will give you a description of what the block actually does. And it will also tell you all of the parameters that you can set. If you scroll all the way down, it will also provide an advanced area and actions. And within the actions, you can actually provide useful additional code, specifically in Java, that you can um, introduce any new uh, functionality that you actually um, that does not come standard with that block. There's also a section called functions, which actually means that if you want to access this block either programmatically or from another block and you want to add some, some, some code, how do you actually go about what methods are available uh, uh, for, for you to address this specific um, logical block? All right, so we go back to any logic. I'm going to create entities. I'm going to call this block source bodies because the simulation model, the small factory that we're going to build will have two components. It will have a body and a door or a lid. And the purpose of this little model will simply be to show how two of these parts can actually be assembled into a new entity type that we call assembly. The assemblies will then be transferred to a different area from where they will be packaged and put into a loading area. Every time that there are 10 of these packaged items available, they'll be shipped off um, and we will build the entire model with a little bit of animation. As again, the purpose is mainly to show how these blocks can uh, can actually kind of be connected and to build a model and we're not going to do much in terms of analysis and uh, decision support. So we start with the source bodies. At this point in time, it will generate the default agent type for us. The arrivals will be defined uh, by a given rate and the arrival rate is one. Um, so it's an exponential distribution with mean one or lambda one. And we can actually see in terms of the model that the time units is currently minutes. So at this point, on average, a entity, a body will arrive um, about every minute. We actually want to increase that a bit. So we're going to change our model so that it runs in terms of 
seconds. To do that, you go to the project, click on the simulation. Sorry, mistake. The, on the project itself and the modeling time units, we're going to change to seconds. <coughs> the next block we're going to add is a queue. When I drag it, it will connect automatically to the previous one if it gets into close proximity. And this queue I'm going to call bodies. And this will just be the accumulation of all the bodies as they arrive. It has an input port, an output port, and it has a preemptive and a timeout port as well. And you can read about those ports and how to use them and when to use them in your reference guide. Next, we're going to put these on a conveyor. And I'm going to call it conveyor bodies. And at the end of the conveyor, it will actually just be the discarded. And we can leave them as default. We can save our model and we should have a small factory that we can run. It won't show much, but if we click on the block, it will actually tell us how many entities have actually been created in that source, in the queue, it will tell us that the capacity is 100, how many has actually arrived, how many went out, and the average duration or the length of, of that queue. Currently it contains two units, one unit, and it actually changes dynamically as it moves on. The conveyor <coughs> has a length of 100 units, whatever those units are. The speed is currently 10 units per in this case per second, uh, it is accumulating and you can actually see the details of the units that are currently on the conveyor. And lastly, we can click on the sink. It doesn't provide any additional information other than indicating for us how many units have actually been sunk. So we've got a little model that is already running. But in itself, it's not all that useful. This actually happens in real physical space. So we're going to add a little bit of animation and you can download the little factory layout from the ClickUp module. On the course's ClickUp page, you will find the image under class examples. You will see that there is a small factory layout on which you can click. And we don't have a save option from here, so it will just open up the raw image for us. And you see that this image has a body storage area. Uh, it has a conveyor area, which is highlighted by, by that path. It has a door storage area. It provides roughly the scale of this uh, production line. It shows us the packaging area as well as the loading area. You can go ahead, right click and save the image as. I'm going to just put it onto my desktop, calling it factory layout. In any logic, I now want to add my animation. To do that, I can go to my presentations tab in my palette window, and you'll see one of your options is to actually add an image. I can just drag the image to my workspace the image is just called image and you can now provide an image. I'm going to add one, go to my desktop where I downloaded the factory layout. I want to reset to its original and let me just move it slightly. Sorry. So 
platform where it's where we can have some space around it for other stuff that we'll do later on and I'm going to lock this image because I will build the animation on top of this layout and I don't want to by accident select my lay uh, my layout image and then move it around so I want it to actually kind of be locked and you'll now see that if I try to click on it it won't be able to select it I can always go back if I really need to select it click on projects under my main under my presentations I can click on the image over there and it will select it for me and I get the properties if I need to unlock the image at a later stage for now just save the model and in any logic 7 there is a new tab that they've created um, or a new palette called space markup which provides a number of very nice features that you can actually build um, and define uh, spaces so since we've only interested currently in the bodies as they arrive to some area in the conveyor that's where we're going to start the pencil on the right hand side indicate that if you double click it you can actually go into drawing mode so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to double click the rectangle and I will draw an area into my body storage I'm just going to zoom in a little bit ah it's good enough I don't want the blue dotted line to actually be visible so I'm going to change its visibility to off and the location I'm going to keep random for now which means that when entities arrive they will be put randomly into that body storage area I'm going to change the name start with a prefix called space because from a search point of view later on it is just convenient to have all my space markup objects starting with the same name so that I can distinguish between variables and parameters and space markup objects I'm going to call this space body storage if you're interested to learn a little bit more in terms of where to use lower and uppercase uh, letters there is style guides associated with Java and you can just Google it and get some helpful information it always helps to stick to the style guide especially if you want to debug some of your code and you want others to look at it so they're not confused with the way in which you've defined variables